everyone here i am going to talk about the life and works of john keats early life john keats was born in 1795 and died in 1821 he lived a very short life he was just 25 years old when he died keats was the eldest son of his parents his father's name was thomas keats and his mother's name was frances jennings he belonged to a very humble background his father was a stable keeper His family's financial situation was not good at that time. He went to John Clark School where he developed interest in classics, history and literature. When Keats was just 8 years old, then his father died of skull fracture. When he was returning home after meeting his two sons at school, he fell down from the horse and died after that. After the death of Keats' father, his mother remarried and that came as an another shock to the family. Keats and his brothers took shelter at their grandmother's home. Keats' mother died of tuberculosis when he was just 14 years old. He befriended Cowden Clark who was the son of the owner of the school where Keats received his formal education. Cowden Clark inspired Keats to pursue his interest in poetry. He also introduced Keats with Edmund Spenser and his works. His career Keats left his school to begin his study to become a surgeon. He also assisted Thomas Hammond as a surgeon. Keats was not happy with the job of a surgeon and he wanted to pursue his interest in poetry. He felt lonely and restless in his job and he resolved to become a poet. He also started translating Aeneid. He read Spenser, Milton, Ovid and other famous poets. He was very much impressed and influenced by Spenser's Fairy Queen. He himself wrote a poem imitation of Spenser that was completely influenced by Spenser's Fairy Queen in which he imitated Spenser in stanza and the dream world that Spenser talks about in the poem as a poet he belongs to the second generation of romantic poets along with Byron and Shelley he is known for his famous odes all of which were written in 1819 keats was inspired by greek art and literature He was so delighted after reading George Chapman's translation of Homer's works that he wrote a sonnet odd on first looking into Chapman's Homer paying a tribute to George Chapman. He befriended Le Hunt to whom Keats dedicated all his famous odes. Le Hunt published Keats' first poem O Solitude in his magazine The Examiner. Le Hunt also helped Keats in publishing his other poems as well. Keats was not considered to be a mature poet when he was alive so all the fame and recognition that he received was only after his death. He faced a lot of criticism of his works by Blackwood's magazine and other critics. Some of the critics even say that he died because of the harsh criticism of his works but that is only a speculation. Keats also befriended a lawyer Richard Woodhouse who supported and motivated him in his life. Woodhouse appreciated Keats poetic genius and encouraged him to write poetry. Woodhouse is sometimes compared with Boswell, the biographer of Samuel Johnson, because of his close association with Keats. In 1817, Keats' brother Tom fell sick. He was suffering from tuberculosis and at that time there was no cure of this disease. At that time Keats along with his brothers kept himself busy in nursing his brother, but Tom could not survive and Keats was very much heartbroken. his love life in 1818 keats went to a, a tour to scotland and ireland he caught infection and died of tuberculosis in 1821 tuberculosis is considered to be his family disease because some of his family members died of tuberculosis he was in love with fanny brown there are so many speculations about this relationship which may or may not be true one of the speculation is that their love could not get consummated because keats could not propose her because he was nursing his brother tom at the time another speculation is that fanny brown rejected his proposal keats depression keats was suffering from a lot of depression during his life and there are various reasons for that first the disease tuberculosis which claimed the life of his family members financial issues as he was under debt for a long time his works faced a lot of criticism although he received all the criticism with calmness and he did not lose his temper his unfulfilled love in his entire life he faced a lot of hardships and problems the gloom and sorrow that he faced in his life gets reflected in his works also when he died his epitaph was here lies someone whose name was writ on water
he could not get fame and popularity when he was alive and he did not want his name to be inscribed on his grave that was his last wish his works endymion his first long poem of 4000 lines was a love story of a young shepherd and cynthia moon goddess published in 1818 this poem was dedicated to thomas chatterton a thing of beauty is a joy forever is the famous opening line of this poem isabella published in 1820 the subtitle of the poem is a pot of basil this poem is adapted from boccaccio's decameron it is a narrative poem about isabella and lorenzo's love hyperion in 1819 an incomplete epic poem in blank verse in miltonic style This poem was a failed attempt in imitation of Milton. This poem is about the war fought between Titans and Olympians. Eve of St. Agnes. A poem published in 1819 in Spenser and Stanza set in Middle Ages. This poem is based upon a folk belief that a girl can see her future husband if she performs certain rituals on St. Agnes Day. So this is about the love story between Madeline and Porphyro. Otho, a play, a closet drama he wrote in 1819. His odes, six famous odes written in 1819, are dedicated to Leigh Hunt. These odes are Ode to Psyche, Ode to Melancholy, Ode to Autumn, Ode to Nightingale, Ode on First Looking into Chapman's Homer, and Ode on Gratian Urn. All of these odes were published in Annals of Fine Arts. La Belle Dame Sans Merci, a beautiful lady without mercy, a ballad poem influenced by Greek mythology. Lamia, a long narrative poem written in 1820. This poem is about a serpent woman and is influenced by Robert Burton's Anatomy of Melancholy. And here this PPT ends.